I'm going to deal with an exam question in this video that deals with health and safety culture. Now, what I've found is that people can often struggle with questions around health and safety culture. I think part of the reason why is that if you look at the HSE definition of culture and also Nibosh have got their own definition of health and safety culture. IOSH have got a different definition of health and safety culture. They're all slightly different, but they're basically all the same as well at the same time, if that makes any sense. But if you read them, I'm not going to put any up on screen or anything. You can sort of Google them yourself and they'll be in your textbooks if you're studying for the Nibosh certificate at the moment anyway. But what you'll find is they're all quite... Uh, wordy um, and there's a there's a kind of I know it talks about a, a lot of the definitions talk about the shared attitudes and values and beliefs that people have around health and safety and some other definitions talk about how imp how that impacts on health and safety at the work uh, you know the person to work interface and all this sort of stuff and reading these definitions they've got this kind of almost like philosophical flavor to them that back in the old days when it was closed book exams, there used to be questions asking you to um, explain what is meant by the term health and safety culture. But so I think this all plays a part, uh, plays into why people, I think anyway, start to struggle a little bit when it comes to answering questions around health and safety culture. Uh, but with the new open book exams, the questions aren't like that. You're not going to you're not going to need to explain what is meant by health and safety culture because with it being an open book exam these days, obviously you could just look that up in your textbook. Um, so what you do have to do now when it comes to health and safety culture with the questions that I've looked at uh, with, in the open book exam format is they tend to be along the lines of uh, what are the negative indicators of health and safety culture from the scenario or what are the positive indicators of health and safety culture in the scenario? Or it might not speculate, uh, might not specify negative or positive, but might just ask you to point out what you think are the indicators of health and safety culture. Uh, and people haven't been doing very well at this question. I think they're getting uh, sidetracked a little bit by these uh, confusing sometimes definitions of what health and safety culture is. Let me simplify it for you though. All you have to basically do is point out, look at the scenario, and I'll go through this with you now in a second. Look at the scenario, and if, if the question asks you to point out the positive indicators, let's say, for example, of health and safety culture, just point out everything that's good in the scenario. If you're asked to point out or indicate what you think are the negative indicators of health and safety, just point to everything that's bad in the scenario. It's as simple as that. It does, you don't need to get all philosophical with it. So let's have a look. Let's apply this to a, uh, a question. This one now that's on the screen, task two, culture. It says, what are the indicators of a negative health and safety culture at the waterfront cinema? Obviously, the scenario was about a cinema called the Waterfront Cinema. I'll put a link to the scenario in the description so you can have a, a read through that. Uh, note, as is often the case with these questions, you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario. This one was for 25 points. This is quite a high scoring one. That's a quarter of all the points uh, right there. In, in one question, like, so there's 100 points in the exam. This one question contains a quarter of those points. So if you do well in this question, you're, you're onto a winner. So the negative indicators of health and safety culture, all you need to do, go back to the top where the scenario begins, write negative indicators. First of all, it takes you for a little bit of a setup, uh, a couple of paragraphs to set things, set things up. Uh, let's skip past that a bit. Right, the audit visit. You arrive at the cinema at 11 as they're opening for the day. 
As you walk through the glass entrance doors, you notice that the doors are dirty. Right, that's an indicator, that's one. The entrance hall has waste bins that are overflowing. That's another one right there. Uh, and there are tickets from the previous week littering the floor. That's another one right there. So that's three indicators there. A worker behind the ticket purchase counter is speaking very loudly on their mobile phone. There's another one there. And I'm not gonna carry on um, because I've already done this before um, making the video. And I got about 51 um, negative indicators of health and safety culture. And I'll list, I'll put those as well um, in the description so you can have a look at those as well. But basically here they are, doors are dirty, entrance hall has waste bins overflowing, tickets from the previous week littering the floor, etc., etc., all the way down to, you know, 50, 51 examples. So these are just cut and pastes from the scenario. That is not an answer. That is not an exam answer. It's the raw material. What I often do is talk about or think about, as an analogy, mining the, the, uh, the scenario, mining the scenario for the raw materials. So this list of 51 things is the raw material that I've mined from the scenario that now I can craft that, these 51 things, into a good exam answer. How might I do that? Well, everything's going to be in my own words. I'm not going to leave anything in my exam answer that's been copied and pasted from the scenario. Uh, and what you might want to do is when, you, when you've got your raw materials like that and you look through them, you'll see that there are some natural groupings that occur. So some might be to do with, obviously, the, um, the ones that we've talked about is the uh, uh, the building presentation, the untidiness and the shabbiness of it. So there might be a few that could be grouped into that. Uh, there might be uh, some stuff in there that centers around poor behavior by the workforce, you know, being rude and dismissive. So you can group them under that heading. Maybe have four or five different headings uh, or groupings, some to do with management commitment, some to do with a lack of training, um, and competence, some to do with um, a poor working environment, and then just group these 51 things under the applicable headings, and then you've got yourself basically um, a good exam answer, all written in your own words. But the key thing I want you to take away really is that any question that comes up, well not any question, but most questions that come up around health and safety culture, don't overcomplicate it. If it's about positive health and safety culture indicators of, it's just basically what can you see in the scenario that makes you think that this place has got a good health and safety culture? Anything that you think um, is an indicator of that is fair game to include in your answer. Anything as you're reading through the scenario that makes you think that it's got a negative health and safety culture, so all the negative things in the scenario Again, same sort of thing applies. Look at the question carefully. Obviously for this one that I've included in the video, you wouldn't get anything for pointing out what you think are indicators of a positive health and, health and safety culture because the question specifically asked you to point out indicators of a negative health and safety culture. So health and safety culture, just basically being another word for it, is health and safety performance. You know, what are indicators of a, a good health and safety performance? What are indicators of a negative health and safety performance or poor health and safety performance? No need to overcomplicate things. If there are any that I missed, feel free to comment in the, uh, in the video. But as always, if you've got your exam coming up, very best of luck with it, and I will see you in the next video.